Now, today's version is slightly longer, 146 kilometers versus 118, but it's the same three climbs, starting with the Alto de Petralba, which was the final climb yesterday, then the Cote Fablo, and finally the long haul up to Adamon Fort Miguel at 1,790 meters. It's a 14 kilometer climb officially, but the road starts rising well before then. Inside the final 15 kilometers, and Gorka is a giddy valiantly trying to hang on to his virtual race lead that's gone only by a little bit he's got a three minute and 13 second lead over the uh, red jersey group and thereby hangs a tail Primoz Roglic has been under pressure and he's got a, a, a 13 second lead over a much reduced chase group of around about a dozen or so riders who are closing in on him this is the second group on the roads, but further down, and three minutes down from Gorka Izagiri is a reduced peloton being driven on at the moment by Movistar, as well as uh, some support from the Israel startup nation. And uh, David Primoz Roglic has had the fight of his life to get back into that peloton, and it's something of a mystery as to why, because there was a split in the group around about 14 seconds further back. Jumbo Visma were trying to pace Primoz Roglic back on, and in the end, only Bennett and Roglic have made it back into this group. Yeah, exactly, and I think that's one of the things that um, uh, I know often people sit in, in front of their TVs and watch and, and are flabbergasted when uh, people are missing things, but on a day like this where all the jackets, uh, everyone's wearing their black jackets, it's very difficult to distinguish. Even the director didn't notice that Primoz Roglic, the lead of the race, although he has his red helmet, something happened to him, and we're still not absolutely clear what it was, but it's, uh, his whole team then went back, and because we're in a race situation now, no one was going to wait. So all of a sudden, we had shots of that front group of what was left of what we're seeing now, that peloton of about 40, 50 riders, and not one Jumbo Visma rider. All those yellow helmets have disappeared. But he's now back in there, and it looks like he's alone, which means would indicate his team has had to essentially sacrifice themselves to save his situation. A couple of coffee dish riders uh, being caught. These two, Pierre-Luc Perichon and Victor Lafay, were in the original breakaway. Their teammate, Guillaume Martin, is still in this bike race, though, once again. He's in that second group on the road at 12 seconds from Gorka Izagiri. As the peloton now passes through, 15 kilometres to go. And the red jersey's just gone through the frame. He's sitting on the coattails of Ineos uh, Grenadiers. Not many of them left either, but Richard Carapaz is safely there. And the two teams who are working on the front, Israel Startup Nation and Movistar. Onto the climb of the Formigal now, and have been climbing the categorised section for the last kilometre or so. Steepest, as you can see from that graphic towards the top, the last three and a half kilometres, uh, close to or in excess of 9% all the way to the top. That's where the real business of this climb is going to be formed. And some real favourites, if this all comes back together again to take the win, in Michael Woods with the pink helmets. Already a stage winner at the Vuelta, don't forget. The Canadian climber and Guillaume Martin is at it again, but uh, there's some other candidates, including two very good riders, very experienced riders from UAE Team Emirates in Rui Costa and Sergio Inal, who are still in the mix. Two from De Koenig Quick Step, Remy Cavagna, who's capable of almost anything, but might find these slopes a little bit too steep for him. And their new Italian signing, Mattia Catanio from uh, the Androni Giocattoli team, who very nearly took a stage of the Giro a couple of years ago, dueling all the way to the top of the Prato Nervoso with uh, Max Schachmann. And look at how reduced his peloton is. And for me, that does indicate that something happened uh, on that descent that hasn't been reported to us yet. Uh, because Movistar, here they are, they're on the front of that group. They understand their there's something to be done here. And for a couple of reasons, if, if Jumbo Visma have been put under stress, which they clearly have been, <laughs> but it's, there's no more teammates left. And this is one of the first times we've seen that happen in the past few months of racing is when Primoz Roglic is completely isolated. And that's due to racing circumstances that very few people, apart from Primoz Roglic and his team, know about at the moment. The rain-soaked slate roofs of Escaria almost disappearing in the mists and the dark wooded hillsides with their steep cliff faces looking down on the race at the moment in the Pyrenees now up towards Formigal hanging on to his small lead through 12 kilometers to go Gorka Izagiri you catch a glimpse of that chase group being at the moment driven on by Dylan van Baal the sole rider from the Ineos Grenadiers who's there Robert Power is the uh, powerfully built Australian who's just uh, reaching for a gel in his pocket at the back, and his teammate Michael Storer is still in this group. 
Georg Zimmermann from uh, CCC, making a name for himself by getting in the breakaway. But they haven't got to Gorka Izagiri just yet, who, let's just remind you, started the day 3.37 down in the general classification and at the moment has a 2 minute and 37 lead over the red jersey of Primoz Roglic. Yeah, and he's racing a GC race, I think. Uh, although the, the, he will have in the back of head this potential stage win, I think he's seeing that slightly going away from him. Regards, the group is now coming back. This is the the breakaway. What's left of it now? Hunting down Gorka is Izaguri, but at the same time, Gorka Izaguri he can move up GC, so that will be one of his reasons and motivations for pushing forward and driving this breakaway on, even by attacks that could seem. Uh, unnecessary because he wants to keep it moving and at the moment it is it's working well for him and it's put the whole race under pressure uh, one of the two Dukernic quick step riders I think it's Catanio has attacked actually it's Cavagna isn't it a slightly flatter section of road and I think Remy Cavagna the Frenchman is gone Guillaume Martin is alive to that sitting on the wheel of his Italian teammate there Mattia Catanio Sergio Enao has gone with them Rui Costa just takes his place in behind Michael Valgren Georg Zimmermann places himself in the orange between the two riders from Sunweb, the two Australians. The young German sprinter, 23 years of age, Georg Zimmermann, riding his first ever Grand Tour in these extraordinary circumstances. And Gorky is a good, he's just ploughing on. He's been out, out front on his own now for, what, 20, 25 kilometres? It's an impressive ride. Yeah, it is, and I think he's, he's got a very different sort of attitude regards his riding and the tempo he's setting. He's setting it to get to the finish line. He's not playing tactics now, so it's up to that group behind to try and get back to him because he's uh, now set in that rhythm. Well, what is going to happen? Are they setting it up for a big attack from Enric Mas, who is riding an excellent welter to date? Or is Dan Martin planning to do something? Could he possibly be about to uh, threaten the red jersey or possibly even take the lead of the Vuelta. 10 kilometers time, we'll find out when this lot gets to the top. An unchanging picture on this undulating climb as the chase group just uh, Dip down a little bit through the puddles that have collected in this torrential downpour on this road and a little bit of respite in the gradients. The real steep sections of this climb are still to come towards the top, the final three and a half kilometres. And this group of riders are all together still. No one's dared attack from this group just yet, although Remy Cavagna, for the third or fourth time today, looks uh, the most likely to try and launch something long. But in the meantime, in the absence of any concerted effort to bring back Gorka Izagiri, he's just dangling off the front at 12 seconds. And the gap between the front of the race and this group, the much, much reduced red jersey group, is absolutely constant at around about two and a half minutes. Well, the temperature at the top of this climb has not got above six degrees all day. And uh, there's a kind of rain chill factor to add into that. Six degrees in the dry, and look at these mountain tops, the Picos del Infierno. Probably needs no translation, but the uh, peaks of hell already covered in snow. Yeah, and it's uh, rare we'd see a Vuelta España with these helicopter shots. Uh, quite beautiful, although not uh, what the bike racers would <laughs> like to be doing right now. Well, we're starting to get to that point in the stage where you have to say the breakaway has it, David, unless something dramatic happens in the peloton. I mean, 8K to go, they, I suppose if they wanted to, they could still wipe that out, but there's some very strong riders up the road. Yeah, I agree. I don't think um, the, the peloton can do it. We've seen very little uh, reduction in that time gap in the past 15 kilometres, and we've also seen a lot of action behind, so that would indicate that uh, they can't do much behind either. And again, that's one of the things that happens after a day like this. There's no just turning it up. Uh, you can't just turn it up to 11 and get things shut down. Everybody's tired. Uh, the race is under a lot of stress. And when you've got a breakaway of this caliber, uh, then it's, it's, these are the type of riders who deserve to be off the front. This hasn't happened by chance. And with Gorka Izagiri forcing everybody's hand, it's meaning that that peloton is not coming back to them. So a huge opportunity for some of these riders, including Guillaume Martin, to finally taste victory at the Vuelta. 
By my reckoning, there are three riders in the breakaway group still there. Although Magnus Court has dropped away, hasn't he? So you'd have to make that two uh, who have uh, tasted victory in stages of the Vuelta. Michael Woods and Remy Cavagna. Unless you count the team time trial, which is always an awkward point because uh, both Izaguirre brothers were part of the Astana team who won the team time trial last year. Jon Izaguirre, the other uh, Izaguirre brother who's in that chase group behind his brother, should he uh, ride to a victory today, would complete the set, having won at the Giro and the Tour de France. And uh, if he were to take an individual stage win at the Vuelta, that would be it. He'd join that elite group of riders that we saw Thomas de Gent join, was it last year or the year before? Not many riders have done that. Now we see that there are teammates gathering slowly, just one for the moment. Yeah, still Roglic. Just, yeah still just George Bennett, isn't it? He yeah. was the rider who uh, took him across or went across with Roglic to join. Oh, join look the at that Israel startup rider just flicking his elbow, just can't hang on anymore. You can see even behind, that's the pace of this group. It's all stringing out into one line, and then at the same time, even riders within it can't really hold the pace. It's uh, hence why we're not seeing that gap being eaten down, because they're not hanging around back there. Movistar starting to work through their troops a little bit. Carlos Verona handing over. Marc Soler is going to do that thing that he does from time to time, which is uh, set it up for a teammate. And what a rider to have at your disposal. This is all for Enric Mas today. And now Marc Soler hits the front, and you can feel the pace straight away. Uh, just changes completely as Mark Solar gets into his climbing mode, and George Bennett has positioned Primoz Roglic perfectly now in third wheel. Yeah, look at that. That's an amazing job. Uh, it, that just goes to show that it, that's where you see Primoz Roglic and just the, t the caliber of the rider seat behind is just decimation. Everyone's just dropping off. And, and this <laughs> is what we talked about before. So there's no rhyme or reason to this. It's just wheels are being let go. Everyone's just realizing that they can't do this anymore. And this is classic. It's rare you see attrition from the front. Dan Martin still handily placed there on the wheel of Primoz Roglic, Henrik Mas. So these three riders are emerging, I think, stage by stage is the three strongest in this welter, aren't they? Primoz Roglic, Henrik Mas and Dan Martin. Behind them, Esteban Chavez still has one teammate with him. But that's a really small group as uh, Jean Poisson drops off from Eji to Ala Mondial. David Godu looks like he's dangling off the back and Marc Soler is just playing games at the front at the moment. Yeah, he is. He's looking so strong. And um, that's what the, the advantage Movistar have is when they have a rider like Marc Mark Soler, who has already won a stage, who is here now to deliver for the team and, and wants to, uh, then you can see the damage that's doing. Finally, Gorka Izaguiri is dragged back by a combination of Guillaume Martin, Jon Izaguiri, Robert Power from Sunweb, as George Bennett now controls the pace for Primoz Roglic. Order is restored as far as Jumbo Visma are concerned, but they still have uh, just those two riders in there, one of whom is the red jersey. Problems for Gino Mada, the Swiss rider from NTT. And uh, an attack from a UAE Team Emirates. Yeah, this is... Uh this is the time to do it. George Bennett now going to the front. Jumbo Visma realizing that they have to make a decision. They go back into being holding the responsibility for the race with Primoz Roglic as the leader. But you can see this. I mean, look at it. And that's happened just from riders randomly uh, losing the wheel. Uh, and even they couldn't have predicted it. And because of that situation, it means that you've had riders that have been caught out who are sitting back, uh, relying on what they expect to happen. And then all of a sudden, it's all changing and they're having to fix the situation. Tapa de la Cruz, 2 minutes 31 down on GC. They'll let him go for now. But he's looking strong, and that's a good moment to go. The difference in the pace between Mark Soler and George Bennett was noticeable. George Bennett's on the front. That's a completely different race situation, and it's allowing the likes of Wout Pools and Kenny Ellison, this group of riders, to get back on, for now at least, until the next accelerations come at the front of the red jersey group. Yeah, it's... Uh uh, you can see it's all grouping, everyone's getting back on. It was Mark Soler that made the difference, that exploded that group, but there was no... They couldn't activate it, they couldn't make the most out of it, but it has eaten in. That was the first time it ate into that gap. They took 30, 40 seconds out of this group, led by Guillaume Martin at the moment at the front of the race. Uh, Gorka is giddy now back in there, and it's, it's because of Mark Soler and his power that the race changed, but now nobody can do anything about it. 
five kilometers to go. The uh, front of the race is all together, and Guillaume Martin is looking stronger and stronger the longer this welter goes on. Will it be his day today, or will the red jersey group still sweep up this breakaway? It's still just about in the balance as the gap comes down to just over one minute 30. Breakaway or a GC day? We're still not entirely sure. Michael Woods now, four and a half kilometres to go, and the Canadian decides it's time to start racing. Guillaume Martin goes with him. Yoni Zagheri looks around to see where his brother is. Rui Costa on his wheel, the former world champion. Gork Izagheri now, through all his efforts, solo off the front, is dropping a little bit further to the back, where alongside him is Dylan Van Baal, the lone rider from Ineos Grenadiers at the front of the race. But the pure climbers now coming to the fore. Yeah, and it's going to be a different type of racing today. See with Michael Woods, he's not relying on the explosive, definitive moment. This is turning into a slog fest. It's just <laughs> <laughs> who can do it for, for, for the longest? Who wants uh, to do it? <laughs> <laughs> there's no explosivity today. Mark Soler, where's he on the road? Has he gone off the front? You can see the gap had gone right out. Well, uh, David Godu is the rider who he's getting across to, and this must be off the front of the peloton. Yeah, maybe he just rode everyone off his wheel. Yeah. And that's why George Bennett went to the front, but we just didn't see it. So perhaps Mark Soler just kept going. So it wasn't necessarily, he wasn't helping the team, he was attacking, but everyone was stuck to his wheel, and that's why George Bennett's now riding. Well, I think you've read that to perfection there. That's a great ride from Mark Soler. Don't forget, he started the day 155 down in GC. After his uh, stage victory, he was much closer, just over a minute down in GC, but he's lost a bit of time subsequently. So, And there's an attack now from Esteban Chavez, attacking that pace being set by George Bennett. And Bennett, at the moment, is can't do anything. Can't do a thing. Just looks uh, in resignation at these attacks, and Felix uh, Grosjean goes, and this is all exploding behind Jumbo Visma now. They know. They now know that Jumbo Visma can't control this. Hugh Carthy, the next one to go. This is dangerous for the red jersey. And uh, where is he? Well, Roglic himself, you can see that... Slovenian national champions jersey the red jersey is invisible he's about halfway down so it's not as if he's sitting on the wheel of George Bennett either unable to respond at the moment and hoping that his Kiwi teammate can do the business here as more and more this. riders just pile forward they all know they've seen Roglic can't do anything Jumbo Visma are weak they rely on the tactic of having so many strong riders George Bennett can't control it and Roglic can't do anything and so that's now everyone is smelling blood and they're going and so this is a key moment and it's Marc Soler that's forced it that's the red jersey group. You can see them pushing on now at the front of the race, though. Ah, uh, Izagheri going. It's Jan Izagheri pushing on. He's got three kilometres to go, but they're the three steepest kilometres of this uh, particular climb. And it's going to be close to 10% all the way to the top now. Dylan Van Baal dropping away. Gorka Izagheri, his brother, also dropping away. Guillaume Martin in the, towards the back of that group of some six or seven riders who are uh, losing a bit of time to Jan Izagheri. Yeah, and it, what's amazing, when you, we look at that now, 3Ks, as you said, it's the steepest part of the climb. And now we get a, a sense of Marc Soler's commitment from behind. Look at all the gaps. You rarely see that. There he is, the leader's jersey. Red just sitting there, and he can't do much about anything at the moment. He's not got teams around him. So he's following the Movistar riders. He is now moving to the front of the group he's in, but everyone is riding away from him uh, one Bennett, by one. Bennett's been dropped. There we are. So George, George Bennett has done all he can, and uh, Roglic is now riding away from him. But he must have... 10, 12 riders from that GC group who've attacked him. Chaos on this road. And uh, Roglic is right on the ropes here, make no doubt about it. The rider, I think, of real interest to, to a lot of us is the rider who started the day in second place, just five seconds down in the red jersey. Where is Dan Martin? That's the jersey we really want to see. The green jersey of Dan Martin at the moment. Lost yeah. in the mists. Jan Izagheri has control at the front and is uh, just simply riding... Uh, towards what he hopes will be a victory. He's no sort of player at all in the GC, but Roglic fully isolated now uh, with Chavez. Is it on his wheel or is that it's Mikel Nievi, I think, from Mitchelton Scott? So Chavez is another rider who's attacked and gone past uh, Roglic, I think, into the gloom ahead of him on the road as uh, we begin to almost lose sight entirely. Is that Dan Martin? That's Martin. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But so Roglic and, and Dan Martin together and Chavez. So they're three of the, the contenders for the overall and they're stuck together and they'll feel relatively safe there. As long as they're with each other, they're, they won't do any attacking moves, but they can see the race riding away from all of them. 
As we go forward again, Sergio Hernan, there's a Movistar jersey. That's Soler's riding That's Soler. style. That is yeah. Marc Soler. And uh, with David Godu, he is now beginning to sweep up some of the stronger riders in that uh, original breakaway group, Georg Zimmermann being one of them as well. As Michael Woods uh, leads a group with Guillaume Martin, Rui Costa, Michael Valgren, and Robert Power. This is the second group on the road. The Soler group is a minute behind them and are holding on to a 20-minute lead, 22nd lead, I should say, over the red jersey group with Dan Martin and Esteban Chavez. There's a few riders missing from our radar at the moment, and there's one of them in answer to the question I was about to ask, where's Richard Carapaz? Because with Dan Martin alongside Primoz Roglic, it's Carapaz now who could be riding into the race lead. He and Hugh Carthy are closing in on Marc Soler. That Soler then going through two kilometres, and Carapaz is flying up with uh, Hugh Carthy on his wheel. Those riders third and fifth on GC going into today's stage. Carthy, 38 seconds off the jersey. Carapaz, only 13 seconds off the jersey. Both better placed, though, than Marc Soler. So and they're making the biggest gains at the moment on the road. And that's the best situation behind, as we saw. As you see, Carapaz is say, he's flying up. Soler is still, he's not weakening so much, but you can see he's, he's ripping through those other riders who are already ahead. But at the same time, Carapaz is looking amazing right now. Is it good here at the front? He does seem to still have it in control, although it's when he starts to hear the riders that are coming from behind, it's too too far in theory for Carapaz to make it back up to Izagiri. But meanwhile, behind that group of uh, the red jersey, yep. there it is. This is the group with Dan Martin. The great thing about him not having any teammates at the moment is that everybody, and nobody has teammates, they're all working together. The gap, though, is worth noting, isn't it? It's 24 seconds or thereabouts. On the road at the moment, Richard Carapaz is the leader of the Vuelta. That's the way things are playing out. But Jan Izegeri is beginning to look uncatchable now, closing in on the final kilometre of this climb, looking up to see what awaits him, but riding clear of the rest of the race. This could be the moment where Jan Izegeri completes the set and rides to victory in the Vuelta. And it's, uh, it's looking like he'll be able to pull it off. One kilometre to go, although it's still very hard. Carapaz still storming through the riders. Uh, is Soler, has he dropped Soler? Yes, Soler is, I think. And Martin's dropping Roglic. Yeah. So Dan Martin is going off, and the uh, five seconds time gap between Roglic and Martin that started today is under threat now as Dan Martin punches away from the red jersey, who is now, for the second time, under distinct pressure here with Esteban Chavez. And uh, I think that must be Enric Mass, is it? Mass, it, who started today in fourth place, so he's also losing out now to Dan Martin. Dan Martin is amazing. Even these conditions, he's able to do that. But look at Carapaz just ripping by those riders who are already up the road. He knows what he's doing and what he can accomplish here. Hugh Carthy's still there. He can't distance him, so Hugh Carthy doing a great ride. But meanwhile, Dan Martin, what he's doing is what Dan Martin's great at. He times his effort to within sight, let's say, the finish line. And within a kilometer, that's when Dan Martin goes, and that's what he's done today. Well, Carapaz is taking the responsibility here, powering on this group, and Hugh Carthy looks like he's going to attack, and Hugh Carthy goes now. And Carapaz reacts, uses the wheel, but uh, Roglic has found Enric Mas's wheel. They were trying to set things up for Enric Mas today, were Movistar, uh, but at the moment, Enric Mas is suffering a little bit. And dropping back with the red jersey, who's losing contact to Dan Martin last time we saw him. 152 to the uh, Soler Carapaz group. That's a hefty deficit, and uh, whatever happens, the general classification is going to take a massive reshuffle at the end of the day, and I'm pretty sure we're going to have a new uh, red jersey. At the moment, it looks like it's going to be Richard Carapaz from Team Ineos. Yeah, I think Carapaz at the moment is doing just a, a phenomenal ride. Meanwhile, Izagiri, what he's done is ridden this perfectly in what is such a complicated day to measure tactically, but uh, he seems to have got this. He's understood it and he's read it perfectly. Well, Astana have played their two Basque cards in the shape of the Izagiri brothers in a breakaway together. It was Gorka Izagiri who, with that long, long solo approach to the final climb of the day and the first five kilometres off the front and on his own, that in many ways set this up for Jon Izagiri through the haze of the rain that's affecting the cameras in front of a non-existent crowd at the top of this mountain in the Pyrenees on the last day of racing before the rest day, Jon Izagiri strikes for Astana. And he is now joining that elite group of Grand Tour riders who have gone to the Giro d'Italia, gone to the Tour de France, gone to the Vuelta in successive years and come away with victory. Jon Izagiri is going to do it. And the Formigal is a climb that means something on the Vuelta. He's the latest winner. Jon it is a giddy, and the nation will celebrate that victory as will Astana. A great ride.
but a fascinating GC race developing behind him on the road as we go back now to Richard Carapaz who's picked up the wheel of Dylan Van Baal from that original breakaway Michael Woods though sprinting for second place and uh, Guillaume Martin once again going to be beaten to the line as he tries and tries to get that elusive victory Woods having to settle for second place along with uh, well that must be Sergio no, Rui Costa I think it is Robert Power Michael Valgren at the end of his tether and Guillaume Martin they cross the line Mattia Catanio the Italian from the Koenig Quickstep and here comes Hugh Carthy now he's left the Carapaz group this is the first rider in the general classification uh, race to come across the line and he's emerged the strongest of all of them and he's going to take a gap over the line as Gorka Izagiri comes across the line to Richard Carapaz of a few seconds Carapaz though undoubtedly is going to be in the red jersey he accepts the congratulations of uh, Mark Soler Carapaz was only 13 seconds down on Primoz Roglic there he is. Dan Martin there the blue helmet just coming up and so Ma Dan Martin's next rider coming through so yeah so this is now we're seeing that that race unfold from here he is Roglic now coming up but you're right Hugh Carthy did an exceptional ride Carapaz was there Soler made the difference but it's Roglic that appears to be the big loser of those riders today Dan Martin I think will probably be in second place at the end of the day still and uh, Primoz Roglic might be even lower than that because Roglic is the big loser today we don't know what went on but we know the end effects and that means the red jersey has passed and it's gone from Jumbo Visma to Ineos as Esteban Chavez heads a group of the other uh, favorites including Enric Mas who will be disappointed to lose time today even to Primoz Roglic and it is all change at the top of the Formigal Yes, and with apologies to Yannis Aguirre and the rest of the breakaway, let's jump straight to the first GC contender over the line, which was Hugh Carthy with one of the rides of the day. He finished 48 seconds behind the winner and seven ahead of Richard Carapaz, who came in with Bobby Starr's Mark Soler. It was another 18 seconds until Dan Martin crossed the line. Then came Primoz Roglic, losing time to all his rivals, except Enric Mas, who suffered more than any of them from the pace set by his teammate Soler. So, Jonas Aguirre completes his grand tour set of stage win podium appearances on a big day in the mountains, which nonetheless had no impact on the top three places in the mountains race. Tim Wellens still has the polka dot jersey, although Guillaume Martin is perhaps in the hunt for it now too. David Godou took time off Enric Mas today and moves up to second in the best young rider race. And Primoz Roglic, who's been leading the points competition since day one, will finally be wearing the green jersey when the race resumes because he's lost the red. He says because of difficulty with another more utilitarian garment. Uh, yeah, we, I had uh, some problems to put uh, my rain jacket on the top of the climb and then, uh, yeah, it split it uh, going down a hill and... Uh, yeah, uh, had to go full gas uh, before even before the last climb to to make it back. Did, did it crash? No, 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 uh, no, no crash. Uh, like I said, I just had a problem with the rain jacket to to put it on and really close it, and uh, yeah, I slide a little uh, too much back in the in the group and on the downhill. Uh, yeah, then it split it. Primoz, it, look, it looks as though some of your teammates had some problems today as well. Um, I think. Seth, how much of a blow is that? Sorry. I think some of your teammates also had some problems today. Um, how much of a blow is, is that? Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure it's not uh, the way we wanted. Huh? Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, at the end, uh, for, well, I will give it all uh, to, 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 do, to do the best. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I think is uh, as long as we are still in one piece, uh, yeah, show will go on. Uh, it's not finished yet, so uh, yeah, tomorrow uh, no racing, and then uh, we come back. Uh. Are you starting to feel tired? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that we will see in the in the next days, but uh, yeah. Like I said, uh, still, uh, I think uh, we will uh, always try to do our best. And uh, yeah, that's why uh, I'm here. We are all here and uh, we will fight for it. And he'll be fighting from half a minute down. Richard Carapaz now leads the Vuelta with Hugh Carthy and Dan Martin split by a couple of seconds behind him. Henrik Mass is twice as far from the lead as he was this morning and only 35 seconds ahead of his teammate, Marc Soler. Alejandro Valverde makes it three Movistar riders in the top ten. There's only one Jumbo Visma though now, with George Bennett slipping out and Sepp Kuss plunging down to 23rd. Chris Froome continues his battling public rehab ride. He's an hour and four minutes behind his Ineos teammate and new race leader. Richard Carapaz takes the red jersey into the rest day. Ha habido dos momentos clave en la etapa de hoy. El primero, el descenso de Cote Fablo. Cuéntame, ¿qué habéis hecho los Ineos ahí? 
Bueno, sí, ¿no? un poco yo he hablado con, con André y, y bueno, nos manejamos muy bien en el agua y, y la intención era pues no bajar un poco rápido y a ver cómo se presentaba de cara al final. Y bueno, no, la verdad es que le hemos pegado un sulcillo a más de alguno ahí bajando y, y bueno, eso también ha hecho animar a Movistar ¿no? que se ponga de cara al final. Ha animado a Movistar, ha diezmado a Jumbo Visma y todo eso ha sido el calvo de cultivo para llegar al segundo punto clave, tu ataque. ¿Cuándo lo has hecho? ¿Por qué has elegido ese momento para arrancar? Bueno, no, un poco eh, conocía lo que, cómo era la etapa al final y bueno, he dejado de hacer un poco también ¿no? a la gente que estaba interesada. Y luego ha habido, la verdad, que muchos ataques eh, por parte de otros corredores y, y bueno, no, sin más, yo había calculado más o menos mi distancia y me he movido en el momento justo.